Hello and welcome to the Smarter Tech Podcast. I'm here today with Elizabeth Shirley. Uh, Beth, thanks so much for being on the podcast. It's really an honor to have you. Thank you for having me. We're going to uh, have some fun. Yes, I think it's going to be fun. And uh, you reached out to me or maybe I reached out to you. I never understand. I never remember all the conversations I have because I kind of do a, a hundred emails a day. But uh, I know you uh, had the brand new angle on uh, not only the work of Martin Paul, but nitric oxide. And basically that for me, it was uh, a new understanding of how uh, EMFs can impact the human body. Uh, before we delve into that in this interview that I think is going to be extremely fascinating, where, whereas uh, if whether you're a beginner or a more advanced health student, I think you're going to get a lot of value here. But before that, please explain what's your background and how did you come across this specific topic of EMF damage, nitric oxide, uh, looking at the work of Martin Paul and just EMFs overall, how did you discover for yourself that this is uh, happening, that this damage is occurring? Well, by trade, I'm a pharmacist. And so gotcha. I went into pharmacy thinking I was going to help people. But after 20 years of seeing people come back sicker and sicker on more and more drugs, in 1996, I became, I started studying to be a certified clinical nutritionist. Gotcha. So I became the pharmacist to go to if you wanted to get off meds or not go down that road to begin with. Mm. So I really got into biochemistry then and supporting biochemistry instead of giving people anti this, anti that. Yeah. So in... 2009, I really started getting into the nitric oxide story and the nitric oxide community and how this, this EMF and nitric oxide connection really picked up was during this viral time. Because, I mean, there are studies showing that this virus, you're more susceptible to it if you're nitric oxide deficient Okay. You don't recover as well. So the virus started in Wuhan and they had just started 5G. And then it spread to all of these other places that had just instituted 5G. Yeah, that, that's a link that we've talked about in on the podcast with Beverly Rubick. And for people who might be skeptical, uh, there is there is an epidemiological link between I would say 5G and all other sources of electropollution, and then uh, your your immune system. Uh, Magda Havas confirmed that several researchers. So that's actually a very serious thing. It's not just a a theory. Uh, the data is there, and it is likely that there are other co-founders such as air pollution or just the stress of living in a city. But for sure, electropollution is uh, not only uh, overlooked, I think, but it's kind of ridiculed and brushed aside as if it doesn't exist. But the link is very strong uh, and it should be looked at at least. So I agree with you on there 100 percent. Because it's a nitric oxide deficiency state that makes you more susceptible to the virus. EMF decreases your body's ability to make the nitric oxide. So EMF just makes it all worse. And EMF actually makes you more susceptible to even to the virus, to bacteria, to fungi, to um, all of these things that cause these chronic diseases. So maybe let's start there. What is the role of nitric oxide in fighting the invaders of viruses, fungi, or even, I guess, detoxification from all the other chemicals we're exposed to? Well, we make nitric, nitric oxide is the miracle molecule. It touches every single physiological process. And the endothelial NOS, nitric oxide synthase, so first we make nitric oxide through two different pathways. One is through the NOS pathway, okay. nitric oxide synthase, and that takes arginine and oxidizes it into nitric oxide. And the other is through the nitrate to nitrite to nitric oxide pathway, which reduces nitrate that we can get through our high nitrate veggies, like arugula, spinach, celery, beets, and it, it reduces a nitrate to nitrite, which is a nitric oxide donor molecule into nitric oxide. 
Gotcha. So one way is uh, through food and the other way, the NAS pathway you've mentioned, what is an example of this uh, exercise, for example? No. Um, yeah. Well, exercise does stimulate the NOS enzyme, but that it, it takes the, the amino acid arginine. Arginine. Gotcha. So uh, if you get enough arginine in your diet, by default, your body would uh, break down the arginine and create some form of nitric oxide in your body. Theoretically. However, okay. there's, there's so many environmental factors that, that uncouple or dis make dismantle that NOS enzyme. Gotcha. So age, by the time we're 40, this NOS enzyme is only functioning about 50%. By the time we're 60, it's only functioning about 15%. So that's another reason why this virus, you know, is so prevalent in the older population. And our diets, the standard American diet, devoid of all these essential cofactors, and nutrients and nitrate rich veggies. Gotcha. And medications huh? uncouple this NOS enzyme, like antibiotics, huh? antidepressants, birth control pills, NSAIDs like ibuprofen, PPIs, proton pump inhibitors that were only supposed to be taken for six weeks at a time are now over the counter and people have been taking them for years. This actually interferes with the production of nitric oxide through both pathways, through the, the arginine NOS pathway and the nitrate to nitrite to nitric oxide pathway. EMFs uncouple that NOS enzyme. So when NOS is uncoupled, it becomes a superoxide generator, not a nitric oxide generator. So it increases oxidative stress. Mm. And then there's a there's an oxidative stress inflammation component to every single chronic issue. Yeah. So the role of nitric oxide, just going back at it, if you lack nitric oxide, what happens in your body as far as your response to, let's say, viruses or fungi or bacteria? Well, for one thing, it, it shuts down your circulation and microcirculation. So nothing okay. can get to where it needs to go. And another thing, you need the nitric oxide made through your INOS, your inducible NOS. This makes the nitric oxide that your defense against the virus, bacteria, fungi. So if you don't have good circulation in order for the, your immune cells to get in there and clean up and do their job, and you're not making nitric oxide in order to um, protect yourself against these things, you have immune system failure. Mm. Gotcha. So it's directly related or correlated with your immune function. Right. Yeah. The INOS, the inducible gotcha. NOS too. Right. You need the endothelial NOS and the inducible NOS for a healthy, robust immune response. Can you specify, um, uh, can you go a little bit deeper on these? Endothelial, that's the internal lining of the body, correct? The internal, yeah, your, your endothelium, it lines every single blood vessel. Got, oh, okay. Got okay. You. And every, like all of the, the transfer of these nutrients, the glucose, the oxygen, the nutrients, and then the carrying away of the debris all happens down on the microcapillary level. And you don't have enough nitric oxide, you cannot keep those microcapillaries open. Hmm. Wow. So it's it's so fundamental. It, it's it, isn't it even more fundamental than nutrients in a sense? <laughs> it's even it's higher the levels. It's yeah. the base of every single physiological function. Wow. So it doesn't really even matter what you give somebody or what you take. If you can't get it to where it needs to go, it's not going to do any good. Yeah. So you, wow, that's, that's pretty profound. So it means microcirculation is, uh, and is, isn't that what, uh, 
I don't know, it just makes me think about cert certain practices that are all about increasing microcirculation, even PEMF that I've, right. I've talked to Dr. Pollock on this podcast. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be posted before this interview or after, but anyway, uh, he, he's there and he has this information. And part of the benefits of PEMF is merely increasing microcirculation. Which is nitric uh, oxide. Okay. So wow. you have to have a coupled NOS, a functional NOS enzyme, or you've got to have good nitrate nitrite stores for optimum results. Because those are the only two ways you can make the nitric oxide. Gotcha. Okay. So, so you know, increase your nitrate rich veggies, you know, or, or take a, a clinically proven nitrate supplement to make sure you've got enough stores. So whatever you're doing, what, like even humming can increase your nitric oxide, but you've got to have that functional NOS enzyme or good stores to get the best results. Gotcha. So what, what is happening is we're getting depleted from our ability to produce um, nitric oxide because of all these environmental factors, including EMFs. And then we don't have the circulation and we have uh, a poor immune system. Right. So specifically about EMS, because a lot of people obviously are, re are looking at this podcast specifically to right. hear about EMS. You did uh, talk in our email exchanges about uh, Dr. Paul's work, uh, Martin Paul, in case people are, are wondering. And I can link to some of his presentation. I know he has this, this, um, this view and how he explain things is that there's... EMFs trigger excessive nitric oxide production, and there's a mix with superoxide creates peroxynitride. Peroxynitride, right. and that's my almost third grader understanding of biochemistry, to be honest. I, I, I'm doing my best here, so correct me if uh, it's nonsense. But basically yep. what he says is, is this, says. peroxynitride yeah. is a nitrogen species, and Dr. Mercola in our exchanges in the last years said, the reason peroxynitrite is so dangerous is that it's such a small um, oxidative species that it can get into the cell nucleus and even into the mitochondria, whereas other types of uh, oxygen, uh, uh, reactive oxygen species or nitrogen species cannot. That's uh, based on the, the work of Paul Patcher, a 2007 paper that is especially impressive. I did try to go through it. It's 140 pages long. So if the geeks out there really want to delve, there's Paul Patcher talks about peroxynitrite and disease, all the links there. So um, yeah. what's but your understanding of Paul's model and where is the damage occurring? Do you agree with him? And let's explore that a little bit while all trying to stay in the level that I can understand. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I don't agree with him at all. Okay. In fact, um, when they talk about peroxynitrite, so peroxynitrite is a molecule when nitric oxide and superoxide come together. Yes. Okay. But when you're under oxidative stress, that uncouples that NOS enzyme. So that's not making nitric oxide. If you're not making nitric oxide, you're not making peroxynitrite. You're making more superoxide, more oxidative stress. So Paul talks about how EMF increases the calcium ion flow from the voltage gated calcium channels into mm -hmm. the cell. And this calcium combines with this molecule called calmodulin, which is part of the NOS enzyme to increase nitric oxide production. However, EMF increases superoxide production which uncouples the NOS enzyme. So you're not making the nitric oxide. You're actually increasing oxidative stress. And that's what that influx of calcium into the cell does is increase oxidative stress, not necessarily increase nitric oxide. See all of these studies that talk about peroxynitrite, do you know what? They don't measure peroxynitrite. Okay. They are measuring nitrotyrosine, and other nitric oxide metabolites. And they're assuming that these molecules did the damage. 
They're assuming. Mm. Gotcha. However, when that NOS is uncoupled, you're not making nitric oxide. So you're increasing the superoxide. It's in essence, the superoxide that's causing the damage. So there's, gotcha. there's other species that make nitrotyrosine. It's not specific to peroxynitrite. In fact, peroxynitrite is O-N-O-O minus. It's O-N-O. Yes. So studies show that actually 90 to 95% of this peroxynitrite isomerizes to NO3, which is nitrate and inert. So this is what the, the nitric oxide research community has been discussing probably for the last 15 years. However, these assumptions that are made, they keep, they have a life of their own. You know, they keep getting yeah. repeated and repeated and just, you know, people assume that they're true, but they're not necessarily true. So just like when you're, when you've got a crime scene, you've always got cops at the crime scene. Doesn't mean the cops are there causing, you know, the ruckus. Mm -hmm. They're there to help clean it up. And that's the same with the nitric oxide and the nitric oxide metabolites. It doesn't mean you, you'll find them at the scene, but it doesn't mean that they're the ones that are causing the damage. Gotcha. So nitric oxide can scavenge that superoxide and then 90 to 95% isomerizes. So it just changes in shape to NO3, which is nitrate and inert. So in, in a sense, uh, what is the disagreement here is really about what is happening in the body. But what you agree on is in the end, it's oxidative stress oxidative or stress. oxidative damage, right? So, okay, right. Uh, we, we can agree on that. And in Paul's model, he talks about the consequences of that in the long term. Uh, right. There's uh, an impact on the PARP enzymes and then a uh, direct link with mitochondrial energy long term, the way I understand right. it from Dr. Mercola. There's uh, maybe even the link with melatonin production that is decreased and also antioxidants reserves. So uh, glutathione, SOD, catalase. So your antioxidant reserves, let's say your your internal defenses go down over time. Can you talk about these consequences so that the average right. person listening to this will, will will get it? Like, okay, well, EMS in the long term causes oxidative stress. What does that mean for my life? Uh, it means inflammation and damage. It means yeah. decrease in nitric oxide because oxidative stress shuts it down. So that means that your circulation and microcirculation are impaired. Cells don't get fed. So cells can only be like no more than two cells away from a microcapillary. And if that microcapillary is shut down, it's not gonna get fed, it's gonna die. So this is very important for, like they've known that EMF causes hypertension and diabetes and they've known this since the sixties. I agree. Yeah. Okay, so you're shutting down that circulation with diabetes. Nitric oxide is essential for this GLUT4 receptor on the cell to bring glucose into the cell. Mm. And yeah. with diabetes and insulin resistance, you see tremendous oxidative stress. So your hemoglobin molecule, in order to transfer oxygen to the cells, has to have a nitric oxide attached to it. So you, then you've got hypoxia. Cells aren't getting the oxygen that you need. EMF is connected with uh, cognitive disabilities because this brain needs that circulation. It needs to be, these cells need to be fed. Yeah, so it's fundamental. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's so very have, simple when explained this way. It's like you don't get the circulation, you don't get the nutrients, you don't get the proper transfer of anything. So mm -hmm. the cells are in trouble. They're just not yeah. reached by 
whatever your body is trying to do. That's pretty fundamental, isn't it? Right. And EMF destroys the blood brain barrier. Yes. Yes. So like what, what clean heart says, clean heart who gets, you know, the sickest of the sick. Yeah. He said they're, they're poisoning our water with the fluoride. They're poisoning our air with the chemtrails. They're poisoning our food with the glyphosate. And now we've got all these EMFs destroying the blood brain barrier, allowing all those chemicals to get up into our brain. Yeah. And you're, I mean, you're not the only researcher that's been talking about this thing. Dominique Valpom in France, for example, is studies around uh, multiple chemical sensitivity and EHS, also electro hypersensitivity. He did mention that, in his opinion, uh, the opening of the blood brain barrier might be one of the factors that are. Uh, It's, it's, that is that might be the most concerning of them all uh and that's oftentimes sometimes i get lost in the details and i talk about well a cell phone to the head might cause a brain tumor 60 years from now and these kind of things and that's important because it can be deadly but what is it doing on our toxification rate uh considering all the chemicals in the environment even here in montreal we did get a letter from the mayor saying well maybe there's <laughs> Maybe there's heavy metals in your water, maybe not. So here's the sectors and things like that because they're old uh, plumbing, uh, uh, basically, that 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 have uh, lead in them, if I'm not mistaken. Or yeah. even copper could be problematic in the long run. And they're kind of saying, well, they don't, they don't say really, they don't even tell you to filter your water ASAP or something like that, which is crazy to me. I do, I do it, but uh, as a preventative measure. But they're kind of. I find them very laid back about it, but it's like, well, if you have that plus everything in our food, plus the smog, which can get kind of bad on certain days in Montreal, uh, in the summer especially, well, you have all of this floating around and your body is doing its best to detoxify, but all of a sudden you open up the bar that barrier and you wonder why uh, the people that are experts in that detoxification, Dr. Chris Shade or Dr. Daniel Pompa, they each tell the same thing. They say, well, yes, there's heavy metals in people's brain. And yes, it makes a cognitive difference when you get them out. So why are they in there? That's the question. Well, maybe part of the reason is we're always exposed to this electro smog that opens up that barrier. Uh, it might be a big factor. Uh, or maybe the chemicals themselves also break down the barrier for all I know. But Glyphosate. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Glyphosate is also a big link, yeah. right? Yeah. However, there's a beautiful thing about nitrate. Nitrate actually helps rebuild those tight junctions in oh. the blood brain barrier, in the gut. You know, like you've heard about leaky gut. Well, yes. you've got a leaky brain too. Yeah. Okay. Um, allowing things to get in there that shouldn't get in there. But supplementing with nitrates or increasing your nitrate rich veggies, you're actually repairing that those tight junctions of the blood brain barrier of the gut of anywhere that you've got a, you know, a tight junction. Can you give some examples? I think there's beets, uh, arugula that you mentioned also. So arugula, is it all the green veggies or not all of them, but arugula okay. has the highest concentration of nitrate without any oxalate issues. Okay. So but you've got celery, um, butter, lettuce, uh, bok choy, beets, or, you know, or a clinically proven nitrate supplement can give you a, because a study shows it takes three to 400 milligrams of nitrates to make the physiological changes in your body. So you can do it with vegetables as long as you're, you're really paying attention, mm. or you can actually do it with a, with a supplement too. Yeah, do mention. Uh, there's a there's something you sent me. I haven't tried it yet. It's a it's a supplement. Are you affiliated with the business? Uh, uh, I, scientific advisory. I don't know what's your role yeah. there. Yeah, I'm the the head of their scientific advisory board. I do a lot of the education. So I, I do a lot of webinars. I have a bunch on YouTube at the Berkeley Life Professional page. So I'm a consultant to them. Gotcha. Uh, and, uh, just for conflict of interest or anything, do you have a part in the company or? No, I don't know. I'm just, I'm a consultant. Okay. Gotcha. Well, that's, so that's Berkeley life. And, um, 
what's in this supplement? Is it a, a veggie extract of some sort or the extract the nitrate? Um... It's, it's a nitrate base. It's a potassium nitrate base supplement. Okay. Yeah. And what it does is uh, it will build your reserves over time of it that supports, nitric oxide? Yeah, it supports that nitrate to nitrite to nitric oxide pathway. Because I remember I said that NOS pathway only functions about 50% by the time you're 40. Yeah. And it's only 15% by the time you're 60. So you've got to replenish that, you know, your nitric oxide or that's, you know, why cardiovascular disease is number one killer, why diabetes is so rampant, why cognitive dysfunction is huge when we get older. So and then in, mix that in with the yeah. EMF and just compounds everything. Hmm. So, so in a sense, it can ameliorate almost any function in the body. It's kind of a very wide ranging type of supplement considering the role that nitric oxide is involved in everything. So it's, it's not a, like you can make claims, I guess, about, uh, oh, the FDA yeah. is going <laughs> to call you after uh, this. So what, what claims I consider can it a you make? Base. I, yeah. I consider it as a base. A base. Yeah. Okay. Right? Because by if you've got impaired circulation, microcirculation, doesn't really matter what you're doing because it's not going to get to where it needs to go. You're not going to heal. Yeah, that, well, I bet. I mean, you, you might take a uh, hundred supplements, but if they're not reaching that cell, it's going to go down the drain, right? So yeah. right through you. Uh, yeah. So that's very powerful. Uh, what is the, you mentioned, is it 300 to 400 milligrams per day of nitrate? Um, per dose. So it just depends on how much oxidative stress or how much EMF you're around every day. Yeah, like because that increases oxidative stress. So EMF, the way it starts making all this oxidative stress, there's this enzyme called NADPH oxidase. This, uh, this enzyme, its only job is to make superoxide. EMF upregulates this enzyme. So you're cranking out this superoxide. And this superoxide uncouples that NOS enzyme, makes it dysfunctional. But see, when that enzyme is upregulated, this preferentially will take all of your, your, your base, NADPH, which comes from NAD or NMN, you know, your nicotine, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So that's the, the new supplement everybody's doing now. That, like, yeah. I keep hearing about that. Yeah. Yeah. But it will preferentially take this. So then you don't have any NADPH to regenerate your glutathione. So then you've got that glutathione def deficiency. And you need that NADPH for phase one detoxification. So now you've got impaired detoxification. You need that NADPH to make your, your hormones. So now you've got impaired hormone production. So it's involved in, in, in everything. So fundamentally, uh, I don't know what are the studies on this, but I'm always um, kind of navigating between uh, certain products that have their merits and uh, glutathione, like liposomal form is useful. But then I tell myself, okay, well, is it like, Nitric oxide could be before that, right? Nitric to avoid oxide it. is before that. It, it is uh -huh. before that. So be, before even considering glutathione, uh, nitric oxide is more fundamental because I guess if you get enough nitric oxide, you would deplete your glutathione reserves right. in less, right? Right. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Yeah, so, it's, it's before that. And what's beautiful about the nitrate to nitrite to nitric oxide pathway is nitrate actually recouples that NOS enzyme. So you're decreasing superoxide production and oxidative stress there. The nitrite and not nitric oxide downregulate that NADPH oxidase. So you're downregulating the superoxide production there. The EMFs are pretty much attacking the mitochondria. 
and that electron transport chain becomes uncoupled. And instead of handing off the electron down to make your, your deuterium depleted water in the mitochondria, you're actually making more superoxide and the nitrite and nitric oxide recouple that electron transport chain. Yeah, so I'm just talking about this aspect in particular because uh, I think a lot of people, <laughs> it went over their head. I do understand that part a little bit because I did study a little bit deuterium uh, depleted water. So if I understand it, then tell me if uh, this, this actually makes sense in a very simplistic manner. The, the mitochondria, which are the power plants of the cell, right. even that I think is a little bit simplistic, but let's say the power plants inside our cells are trying to create energy, but they can run cleaner or they can run dirtier. Right. Is that right. correct? And then correct. if EMFs poison the mitochondria or kind of uncouple um, certain things that could happen, or let's say disrupt certain processes in there, your in their energy production creates more stress to your body, kind of dirtier, dirtier fuel in that sense. Right. Right. Okay. You're increasing that superoxide production in the oxidative stress. Gotcha. Instead, of, instead of making more DD like deuterium depleted water, which is how the the charges are held and transferred in the mitochondria. Gotcha. So again, that's fundamental because energy production, if it runs dirty, you're kind of it's it's like you need the energy, but there's a cost to that energy. So by default, your health will not be where it's supposed to be, uh, or where it could be if if right. if you if everything ran the right way. So faster that, aging, right, lowered right. immunity, lowered right. energy, uh, lowered con cognitive function, fertility. I mean, every right. single everything. thing is affected. Right, because everything takes energy. Yeah, and if you can't make it then your body like disregards all these non-essential functions like reproduction, hair, skin, nails, you know, and digestion. So all it, all it has is enough energy just to even, you know, basically keep you alive instead of making you um, healthy and happy. Gotcha. Uh, maybe, I don't know if this is a curveball or what, but I've been thinking about this in the last, 10 to 20 years, uh, especially the last 10. And I don't know if I'm a little bit paranoid about uh, having gray hair myself, and I'm just 34, but I see a lot of men and even women these days that seem to be almost my age and are starting to gray out with, in, in a way that I think it's premature. And I don't know if that's a judgment. I, don't, I haven't seen data and like, are people becoming gray faster? But are. Would there be a link? Because what I read is, well, the gray hair is is a is basically peroxide that is uh, that cannot be removed from the body or something like that. So is it oxidative stress that could oxidative stress and yeah. EMF actually increases these enzymes that make hydrogen peroxide? Yeah. So okay. is there a link? Yes. 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 Mm. Yeah, I've always suspected. I mean, we're in a city environment. I see more people who look very young, but have completely gray hair or beard. And I'm like, I don't know. It just looks like like in the old times, people in their 60s were gray. Now it's like in the th their 30s or something. Even 20s. Uh, yeah. Yeah. In their 20s and uh, some people blame it on genes but i'm always when people blame it on genes usually it's wrong it's like in 90 percent of situations it ends up being completely wrong it is more like of an excuse uh because it's mostly epigenetics uh, or the expression of genes that that really matter um uh, what I, I wanted to look at other ways to rise uh, or to raise uh, nitric oxide uh, we've mentioned uh, the supplement Berkeley Life, and we're going to have um, a link to that if uh, you want to check it out. There's also certain foods we mentioned. What about exercise? Uh, is it is it fair to say that if you exercise a certain way, you can increase your internal production of nitric oxide? Well, you can, but once again, that NOS has to be coupled or you need good nitrate and nitrite stores. 
Okay. Okay. So because you can't make nitric oxide out of any other way besides those two ways. You know, so, so that does increase nitric oxide, but you really want to make that um, work better for you is have good nitrate nitrite stores. And so I, I am not a fan of increasing arginine intake for somebody who's under oxidative stress. Remember EMF increases oxidative stress because you give arginine to somebody who's under oxidative stress, this actually increases the oxidative stress. <laughs> So you yeah, understand. Okay, I get it. Yeah. You increase this molecule called ADMA, asymmetric dimethyl arginine. And that's connected with all cause mortality. So I don't oh, give arginine wow. to anybody that's got any kind of chronic issue over the, or over the age of 40. So if you know, or if you suspect that their, their cycle is uncoupled, uh, it's not functioning the right way. It means that increasing arginine increases the problem. Whereas right. if it's coupled and it works the right way, giving arginine will heal them. Is it right. kind of correct? Most yeah. of the studies that show arginine increased nitric oxide are done on young male fit athletes. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Where their NOS is coupled. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So I won't recommend arginine again <laughs> i've been in nutrition for uh, before ems i was studying nutrition and arginine kept coming back as something for uh sexual potency and uh, all these studies right but if they're on young healthy participants and then you give arginine to a, a 70 year old male that is completely well, I mean, throughout the years, been exposed to all these things, and e even age is a factor, as you've mentioned. Right. After forty, it it uh, becomes uh, lessened by fifty percent that uh, nitric oxide production. Uh, then maybe you're giving something that could be detrimental instead. Yeah, that's why context is super important. I find that it's severely lacking from some of these discussions. Sometimes it's like, oh, this nutrient is good. And this one is bad or this thing is, well, sometimes it depends. So we got to be very careful with these things. Uh, so when it comes to exercise, if I understand correctly, could that explain why certain people are already chronically ill or fatigued? They exercise more, they feel horrible. Uh -oh. Yeah, because they're not being able to feed their muscles. Mm. Right? They're not being able to clean away the debris. Like when you exercise these, these muscles, it makes debris, like cellular debris. They're not being able to clear it away. However, the muscles have like myoglobin. And this myoglobin can change nitrite into nitric oxide on an as needed basis. So maybe even like supporting that nitrate to nitrite to nitric oxide pathway in some of these really fatigued people will help them with their exercise program because yeah. it's giving them a base so that their body can open up that microcirculation and do the exchange. Yeah, so not only that, so there's the, the microcirculation, but if I understand you correctly, there's also the fact that if you're, well, if you're uncoupled, the exercise can also be soup like like create excessive oxidative Oxidate damage yes. which you have a hard time mopping up because you right. don't have the reserves now you're gonna and some people would say oh that's adrenal fatigue and that's the understanding based on adrenal glands or oh no that's uh so anyway whatever you want to call it we've most people listening to this have experienced it whether it's professional burnout and then you feel like you're so fatigued but somehow when you do have the energy to exercise, it depletes you further. And I wasn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't a spot like this when I was 26, uh, burned myself professionally sleeping three to four hours a night and exposing myself to a lot of EMS because I didn't know better. And, uh, so yeah, I was human after all, and didn't know anything about this before, I guess, becoming the EMF guy in, my, in the last years, but, uh, I, I didn't know better and I, I was eating pretty processed foods, you know, all, so all these things were contributing. And I just felt like any small amount of exercise would just 
destroy me and I, I was in disbelief because i was 26 so i was technically a young healthy male but I, i i just burned myself so much and i had to rebuild that resilience uh, over time so kind of just little steps but nitric oxide in in those situations i guess it could be highly beneficial whether in supplement form or other things we've mentioned that can increase nitric oxide could be a good thing to consider for people who have this excessive fatigue all the time and are barely able to move? Well, EMF causes, um, it, it's, a, it's a stress reaction. It actually makes all of our cells on alarm, which increases your cortisol, your stress hormone. Cortisol uncouples that NOS enzyme. Okay. So that's why when we're, when we're stressed, we get sick easier because it's mm. uncoupled that INOS, inducible INOS. That's why when we're stressed, we have more cardiovascular disease, more hypertension, MI, strokes, because it's uncoupled that ENOS. Gotcha. So and there, that's like the hormonal understanding of that entire cycle. Right. With, and I've, I've heard, I mean, through the years, cortisol, high cortisol all the time, and it could be work stress, it could be it wife or matter. husband stress, yeah. it could be I'm just thinking about this planet and everything is screwed up and I'm afraid that everything will go to hell because of the war and yeah. but that's stress and then so it also contributes to that cycle. So this is part of the reason sometimes I send a newsletter out, I just wrote one this morning and say, guys, <laughs> Yes, the world is kind of messed up, to be honest, but we have to also go go Zen sometimes, do meditation and these kind of things to kind of lower that amount of stress. So there's, again, there's, uh, I think it's not just one thing. Sometimes people in EMFs, I see them kind of having this uh, super myopic view of, oh, it's only EMFs that matter. Well, no, no, we're human beings with so, we're exposed to so many things and we're also exposed to these thoughts that, put us in a bad place sometimes. So also watch your thoughts. And uh, so practices like breath work, meditation, yoga, Tai Chi, I mean, in a sense, they could contribute to at least not stressing you out and depleting you further, in a sense. Right. That's very good. See These voltage gated calcium channels, when that calcium is being influxed in the cell, this increases excitotoxicity. So this is the anxiety part. And nitric oxide increases this molecule called GABA in the brain. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So GABA not only calms down the brain, it actually decreases that calcium excitotoxicity, that calcium. Oh, okay. Wow. You know? Okay. So that's the amino acid anxiety link. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm starting to put things together that I've read among the, the years. So yeah, I'm having, <laughs> having a lot of links in my head. It's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. So, so GABA in that case, if you're always exposed to EMFs, always under stressful thoughts and it kind of they, they both feed themselves you're on this right. you're on the phone you become anxious you become right. anxious you pick up your phone it's kind of a a cycle the like this where cycle. yeah be, people become crazy with their technology the, the technology makes us addicted the technology pings all the time and depletes our our dopamine or kind of causes a cortisol spike all the time so now you're depleting yourself and then you have you don't have as much GABA. And I, I know that for a fact that for me and several other people, GABA is something that works for them because they don't have enough. So why don't we have enough, right? <laughs> so is it the stress? Is it the environment? And it's probably a combination of all of it. it There's is. like this, this black box of stress that people are exposed to that unfortunately is... is I don't find a lot of uh, doctors or people who deeply understand that we are exposed to this amount of stress that is not something that necessarily our, our ancestors were exposed to. So that's also what I'm interested in on a 
let's say, a, an anthropological view or ancestral view is, well, what's the difference? Like, why is everyone sick? That's kind of was what has been driving my work for 12 years is, okay, how is it possible that this generation is, is sicker than ever and every generation is becoming sick and sick? And I'm like, okay, what changed? Chemicals, yes. And then when I stumbled, stumbled up in the EMS, I was like, wow, well, that's such a big change and it's increasing fast. So I was even more concerned because I told myself, well, if at least the chemicals, most people at least know theoretically that chemicals are bad, but then EMS, a lot of people don't even know or are in disbelief. So that's right. that's the big issue that we still have to work on is making sure that at least we know that it's bad and then logically the policies will will follow and and users at least will have the possibility through that kind of education to try to minimize their exposure unfortunately i mean this podcast today is kind of bad news because of course you're exposed to cell towers and whatnot and it is depleting you but i guess the message the 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 parting words because i want to end there i think it's been very complete and thorough discussion is what would be the top ways to replenish nitric oxide. Uh, so I guess food would be one that is kind of easy for most people. If you're, especially if you have access to like a farmer's market or something. Yeah. So uh, can you, can you name these, these veggies again, maybe so that people right. can easily find it. Arugula, butter, lettuce, spinach, uh, celery, beets, bok choy. So there, there are saliva test strips. Okay. that test your nitrite concentration of your saliva. So this gives you a good idea if you can replenish well enough through your diet. Oh, that's very nice. Okay. If you can't, or you're under a lot of oxidative stress, you know, get a clinically proven nitrate supplement, something like the Berkeley Live. Gotcha. So this way, you know exactly how much nitrate is in there. Because vegetables from different parts of the, the country have differing amounts of nitrates in them. Yeah. And so even the organic vegetables, unfortunately, have less nitrates contained within because they don't use the nitrate fertilizers. Okay, so it's, it's naturally occurring in nature, but if they use the fertilizers, there's more, or how does that work? Yeah, in the non-organic foods, they actually use a nitrate fertilizer. So they will have more nitrates. However, by using those, those test strips, you can, you can tell if you're optimizing what you need, because it will tell, it will tell you. So if you do the test strips and it shows us sufficient, you're you're doing a good job at the you're moment. Doing a good job on, on yeah. And uh, as far as coupling goes, we did talk about it throughout this discussion. So I just want to clarify something. If I use the saliva testing and it shows as very good, does that mean that it's likely that my system is functioning normally or? Your system is functioning better because nitrates help recouple that NOS. Okay. So you're actually, you know, you're supporting both pathways. If, um, you know, if you can look at those strips and the strips look good, both pathways are being supported. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's, it's good. And, um, can these tests are also, they are available at the Ber 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 Berkeley, Berkeley life, Berkeley life. Uh, -huh. right. uh, and how much are there, uh, for test strips, for example? Um, I think there's a tube of 50 of them for like $24 or something. Oh my God. Okay. Well, so it, it's okay. It's so reasonable. enjoy the very affordable, uh, testing that that's cool because uh, a big frustration. I know I talked about hair mineral analysis lately. Uh, there are some, I do the urine test. I do the stool test. I do many of them, but there are hundreds of dollars. The average person is not willing to go that far when it comes to All cost. Right. So at least having, if it's 25 bucks and you want to test your saliva, well, maybe it will encourage you to take a supplement or do something about it, reduce your stress it. levels and see how it impacts it or uh, start focusing on these veggies we talked about and see how it affects it. But uh, I'm going to try to supplement and report on, on, on my findings. Uh, I consider myself in great health these days, but... For sure, I'm exposed to a lot of EMS in Montreal. That's for sure. Even though I do my best and I fall, I, I do walk the talk and my computer is wired. I, I have 
I'm doing everything I can. But just well, like exposing said, myself to the outside pollution. environment yeah. does contribute. Yeah. Because yeah. you like you said, pollution. Pollution uncouples noise. Exactly. Glyph glyphosate, even though you're eating all organic, glyphosate's in the air. Yeah. It uncouples noise. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> and I just hate it. I, I hate that this is the reality, but um, a lot of, throughout my years, I, I did talk about the fact that, I mean, you shouldn't really, a lot of people are kind of naturalists in that way, and they, they say, well, uh, why should I have to take supplement? I want to stay all natural. We're not all natural, guys. <laughs> this is not a paleo environment. I'm in a city getting attacked by <laughs> the cell towers, excessive blue light. I talk in front of a, of a screen. My right. work is, I mean, it's all bizarre. We're all in a bizarre dystopian future where if it works for you and you don't have to take uh, any supplement, uh, that that's great. And if you have health tests that show you so and you do the saliva strip and you're in a good place fine that's that's perfect good for you and maybe you have a great uh resilience or maybe you've kept your resilience throughout the years but if you do the test and you're severely deficient well that's something to explore so right. we should be open-minded to at least okay well what can i afford what is the best thing for me and i'm always exploring these things but uh through this conversation i i i I know that you've convinced me that nitric oxide is way more fundamental than I previously understood it. So thank you for that. And I know you have um, at least one presentation that I listened to and that is extremely thorough in the biochemistry side of things, but you probably have more with uh, Berkeley Live. So please let us know uh, how we can find about your work. Uh, we're going to have the links to this test strips and the supplements if people want to want to try them. But like I said, this is not the, the goal of this podcast is not just to sell something. We did talk um, about all the foods and whatnot. And you wanted to true. I wanted to um, invite you because you brought such a, a deeper understanding of nitric oxide. And I know it did. A, it made a big difference for me. So I hope that everyone's going to like this discussion. And hopefully it wasn't too geeky because I did try to. Uh, bring you back to an uh, understanding that makes sense for me. But I know I know these are all new terms for some people, but just write in the comments if there's some confusion and I'll make sure to, to answer. But you have more advanced presentations for uh, doctors, biohackers who follow me or people. Oh, I know I know some heavy geeks follow me and they're like, no, no, I want deeper and deeper and deeper. So how can people find these presentations? Go to YouTube, the Berkeley Life Professional page. I have a lot of webinars on there. And okay. I go really into detail on EMF and nitric oxide and give you the whole biochemistry background of it. Tremendous. Yeah. I will link to those. So they're free of charge. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks so much for what you're doing. This is incredible information. And I mean... Well, if you're listening to this, here you here you go. You get like a, almost a PhD for free right there. <laughs> like the, the very, very deep biochemistry, at least like a, I'd say a master's or something. I know. It, it, and if you can understand it all, congratulations. I think you are a master of biochemistry. Well, thank you so much, Beth. It's been uh, incredible. And I hope to uh, continue sharing the education about nitric oxide and um, I'm always looking at different solutions that can help us mitigate the effects of EMFs, the nutrients, the magnesium, there's the presidium supplement that was created that is also quite unique, but nitric oxide should be considered in the it's mix. Like the I've, yeah. yeah. It's like I think it's a mix of things and avoidance, reduction, spending time in nature in uh, low EMF environments as much as we can. But uh, just understanding the nitric oxide is I just have a deeper appreciation for it. And uh, I will go uh, today to the grocery store and grab some of these veggies. And yeah. just, I've lost I've lost my good habits of like doing bok choys and things like that. So, uh, yeah, just I mean, if you need a podcast to motivate you to eat veggies, I think uh, we, we <laughs> I think it's a winner. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, thank you so much again. And I hope uh, that we're going to be able to pick your brain some more in the future because it's been uh, a very good time together and uh, your information is really, really valuable. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. Thanks for having me.